Hello, everyone here. Hello, Hungry Kales, watching on a streaming platforms. I'm extremely excited for our first ever panel, The Future of Food. My name is Nemanja Goldobovic, and you know me as a CEO and founder of Kale My Name, but tonight I'm your moderator. We have incredible guests, and I just cannot wait to introduce all of them to you. So I'm going to start with our first guest. He is a board-certified internal medicine physician with the Northwestern Medicine. He is the creator behind Plant Based Artists on Instagram and the author of the vegan cookbook, Plant Based India published August last year, which was named one of the New York Times best cookbooks of 2022 and nominated for a James Beard Award. Let's welcome him with an applause, please, Shield Shukla. Thank you so much for being here. Next guest is a TV and a social media personality. Since switching to a plant based diet, she cured herself of asthma, shed 40 pounds, and renewed her quality of life. She created her blog and social media platforms where she's sharing her journey with hundreds of thousands of followers. Please help me welcome Plant-Based Amika! Hey everyone! Um, our third guest is the founder and CEO of Carbone Restaurant Group a hospitality company that operates some of the most innovative restaurant concepts in North America. At only 36 years old, he has made a significant impact in the restaurant industry, earning him a spot on the top 40 under 40 list. Please let's applaud for Benjamin Nasberg. Perfect, how is everyone doing? Great. Okay, that makes me so happy. I'm going to start with a very ice-breaking question. All of my guests tonight happen to be vegan. Not that it was a requirement, but it was just a, a complete accident. It's a super easy question. Sheil, how did you go vegan and why? Yeah, so I went vegan in 2015. Uh, and like many people who go vegan, it's by getting more information about the animal agriculture and industry. Um, and for me, it was primarily through documentaries. So it was documentaries like Vegucated, which I think is one of the first ones that I watched. Um, and being exposed to the vegan lifestyle through documentaries like that, that's what really inspired me. And then all of a sudden on New Year's Eve, uh, so 2014 leading into 2015, it's when I said, maybe I can just try it out and we'll see what happens. And that night I made um, a vegan mac and cheese and honestly, I, I hated it. And um, <laughs> I don't know what went wrong with the recipe, but I, for me, it was just a challenge that, you know, I just want to give it a shot. And it was mainly just a test of my willpower to see if I could actually do it. And I stuck with it and here I am. Um, so that was kind of my start. Again, 2015 is, is when I went vegan officially. I've been there since. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Like, don't be scared to applaud. I love it. Tamika, yeah. can you share your story? How did you go vegan and why? So I initially went vegan in 2017, trying to um, cure myself of asthma. And it ended up being just like you, Sheil, watching documentaries, just jumping into it like head first, trying to learn everything about this lifestyle. And it started for health and then it turned into a, being about the animals, the environment, the, you know, everything about the lifestyle. Um, it's so funny because my husband asked me like, why are you watching that documentary? Um, the one about, uh, oh, it's just animal agriculture. It's, it's really, really graphic. And I was just bawling crying. And I'm like, because when you know better, you do better. And I, I said that crying to him. So basically, I started in 2017. I had a little slip up, got back to it in 2019. And just like Sheil said, and here I am. <laughs> Ooh, um, that's amazing. Um, what about you, Benji? What's your story? I went to Wendy's with my buddies to go, and then with the plan to go watch football. Uh, we got seven junior bacon cheeseburgers and spicy chicken meals and I uh, went out to my friend's house. Everyone was already full, so I ended up eating over half of those meals myself. Went home, didn't feel too good. Mm -hmm. Didn't really want to go to the gym too hardcore and uh, the girl I was dating at the time 
was vegan. So I jumped on the uh-huh. wagon. Uh-huh. And, uh, I think it was like at the 10 day mark. Cause I, to, for, for me, I'm like, I'm just going to do this for a week. And I will say before this, the, the friends that I had that were vegan, they were always like, it, I didn't, what all the food they were eating, this was eight years ago. So it didn't look good to me. I was like, I can't be vegan. Everyone's eating salad with no dressing. What is this? Uh, not for me. Anyways, fast forward to seven, eight years later, um, a completely, completely different world with us sitting in a vegan food hall with amazing food around us and amazing vegan burgers and pizzas. Back then, it wasn't that easy. So cooking uh, at home, she was already cooking that way. I had restaurants that I could integrate plant-based items into, so it was convenient for me. By the 10th day, I felt like a whole new person. I was waking up at like 5 a.m. I didn't like mornings before. I was super clear-headed. I was motivated. I was just compounding positives people said i looked better i was like i didn't know i looked bad before but thank you um and so uh the kicker for me i think was my third month i needed to get blood work just for um insurance work uh or for insurance policy i should say and my blood work came back and they said i have the blood work of an olympic athlete how often do i work out i said i barely do i just went vegan three months ago they said don't change what you're doing uh so that was eight years ago and then as uh, you have all said it's more than just about learning how, you know, the whole world can benefit from this, um, as well as, you know, not only ourselves, but the future generations. It's just a lot of positive effects uh, that come from this. And we've seen this facts and the data on, you know, various sides. And I just think that the science is on our side. So here we are. That's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Feel free. <laughs> One thing. The girl will do it, okay? I heard so many stories about how I ask people, how did you go vegan? And they start with like, well, my girlfriend or my boyfriend at a time was <laughs> vegan. And I'm like, oh my God. It's always a love story, which is beautiful. For me, it's one single reason, animals. And then everything else that came with it was just an uh, extra. That was absolutely my main reason. I wanted to uh, hop immediately on our first topic of the night, and that would be the restaurants, right? We are in front of six beautiful, wonderful restaurants over here. But sadly, we witnessed many restaurants closing within the last couple of months uh, in Chicago. And I just traveled to LA learning that the vegan restaurants are closing um, over there. Benji, you're operating a lot of restaurants yourself. So I wanted to ask you a question. Why do you think that the vegan restaurants are struggling? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. And I'm going to pivoted a little bit because a lot of restaurants are struggling. It's not just vegan restaurants. You know, what one in five restaurants succeed in this day and age. So you're already against the uh, the grain going into this world. Now, uh, the plant-based world, it, it's still a niche market, right? So, uh, and it's typically a little bit more expensive than your traditional ways of eating. And in, in this economy, uh, you see McDonald's and Domino's and those types of brands thriving because of their price point. People are looking to eat to get full. They're not looking to eat to be getting a nutritious, well-balanced whole whole food diet. So, and that, and that's in general. So I think that uh, to recalibrate your question on on the vegan side, I think you know for a restaurant to be successful, it starts with location. It then comes down to management, technology, mm-hmm. and you know being up to date with current trends and and being able to pivot. So with COVID, a lot of our concepts, we got into ghost kitchens and started testing out a lot of new things that we never thought we would do. We were making, uh, we partnered with a food bank that had to close their operation because of social distancing. They had double the demand, but they couldn't fulfill on the need. Our restaurants were all closed. So we worked out a deal where we fundraised for them, where they then bought meals from us that we then delivered to them. Mm-hmm. And we were making soups and sandwiches out of pizza restaurants. We were doing vegan, non-vegan. We were just doing things to also survive. But at the time, what we learned was that we can figure shit out. As long as, you know, we put our thinking caps on, um, our our team and our minds can always find a way to win. So I think in this type of world, it just fo- forces us all to innovate. We're sitting in a vegan food hall. This wouldn't have, you know, happened if there wasn't a lot of problems in the world for us to all come together and collectively um, put our energies into one build where all can benefit. You know, just if um, someone's here to get pizza, they're going to now be able to get burgers uh, and not be necessarily be aware of that brand. So everyone is putting their collective effort together. So I think 
I don't know if it was part of your question, but the way we will win is just a collective effort. Mm -hmm. It's not about opening a business and trying to be the winner. It's about being a part of the community and doing it for the greater good so that everyone can win. Because at the end of the day, there's more people on the planet. There's more food waste than ever. There's more problems with food insecurity. There's a lot of money out there. You know, we're born at the best time in human history, in, in my belief. So I think that if we continue to uh, lead with our hearts, then we will find a way to win together. Perfect. I love that. Tamika, you are the frequent visitor of most of the vegan restaurants, yes. not just in Chicago, <laughs> but in the country. We'll travel for food. Yes. You visited so many of them. And I just want to hear from the consumer perspective, right? Because like um, Benji runs the restaurants, but you go and, and are just a customer. What do you feel like it's working for those restaurants that you visit and be like, oh my God, this is so great. But on another hand, this can be so much better, right? So from the consumer perspective, why do you think the struggle is there? And what advice would you give to the vegan restaurant owners to try to operate better? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't really have a problem finding tantalizing vegan food anywhere. Like it's really not that hard to find. There's so many amazing restaurants, but ultimately I think it boils down to one marketing um, and then two good customer service. Mm -hmm. So you're only as good as your team. And, but I also, at the same time, I understand the struggles of these small business owners and these restaurant owners, the rising cost of food staffing is a huge issue. I know like the turnover rate and everything like that. So I know that that's a challenge. So I try to, and I hope that everybody else tries to give these businesses grace and let them know um, that just because you may have had the not, the not, you know, I, most ideal experience that it doesn't necessarily reflect, reflect the business as a whole. You have to be very focused on service. Um, and then a lot of times with marketing, I'll go to a restaurant's Google listing, Instagram page, whatever it may be. And I'm not seeing pictures of the food. I'm not seeing anything that's like pulling me in. And to me, that is like, it, it really, it kind of blows my mind sometimes. I'm like, I'm on a restaurant's page, but I don't see any food. I see flyers and pluggers and things like that. So ultimately, especially in Chicago, we are a food porn city. So I just think that you have to show the food, show it, um, being prepared, that kind of stuff. And um, I know that it can be a challenge sometimes. So I just suggest that the small business owners either ask another person, delegate it, um, or just set up a tripod and just, you know, everything is content. Everything is content. Okay. I don't know if y'all heard that before on social media, but yeah. that's the truth. So <laughs> perfect. Well, that's amazing. Well, I hope this gives some clarity to the restaurant owners and, you know, what we can do to improve. Um, but I would love immediately to jump um, on our second topic and with a doctor. I was just uh, so curious over the years about technology of the food and everything that we are using to make it different way. And now in the last couple of months, like every article I open, it's about lab grown meat. And I was just wondering, what is your opinion about it? Would you try it? And do you think that there is a way of making it with better nutrition than the regular meat is? So for, for me, the answer for that comes to the question of fiber. So we know that fiber is one of the most um, healthful things that we can consume. So when we look at some of the best foods that there are available, that would be things like nuts, seeds, legumes, fruits, vegetables, whole grains. And we know that the diet that's plentiful in all of these things has all of those ingredients and all the common feature of all those things would be fiber. So the question of lab meat becomes, there's not really any fiber in meat, whether it's lab grown or not. Mm -hmm. So from a health standpoint, I have a lot of questions about that as to whether it would be really the best option. Um, and I probably wouldn't try it mainly because I just don't have any really desire to have sort of those textures of meat. Mm -hmm. And I, that's just not something that I really miss personally. Um, is it a good option from a, you know, ethical, uh, climate change perspective, possibly. Um, but from a health standpoint, you know, I think there are a lot of unanswered questions. And for me, it comes down to fiber and the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love that. Um, I always thinking how personally, I don't want to eat meat at all, regardless. So I don't think that I would be eating it. 
But I kind of want to support it because I'm thinking like it's probably better for some other things if like not just um, for the health. But um, when we when we speak of meats and as vegans, we eat a lot of alternatives, right? So like I know, Tamika, you've tried probably every um, alternative that there is out there. Which ones are your favorite? Mm. Which ones you think that they're perfected? But which ones you think that need more improvement? Oh, dang. You're going to have me put some of these businesses on blast on video? <laughs> no, we don't, we, <laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to name the business. Let's we can with the positive. How about that? Okay, um, yes. The first brand that came to my mind is one that I really like is Meaty. It's pretty new. Uh -huh. It's a mushroom root. Mm -hmm. And it's so good. I was like, oh, this is tantalizing. It's like a vegan steak. I made like a vegan steak burrito with it. And then they have like a vegan fried chicken. It was really good. So the thing that I really love about it is that it, it is healthy. Like mm -hmm. I was able to read all the ingredients and it was a short ingredient list. So I don't know what kind of sorcery they're doing, but I'm with it. When so. you can pronounce ingredients, that's yeah, a good sign. It really is. Yes. I do like Beyond. I like Impossible, but I feel like it's a science project gone right. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's just a very, very long list of things. Um, and ultimately i really feel tired a lot of times when I eat like uh, the uh -huh. processed meat. I think my body is like just trying to break it down and things like that. So I really just like a good old black bean situation or like a uh -huh. veggie situation. Um, I really do enjoy those more. My body can process it. Um, but yes, the meaty and I do like beyond, but I just try to limit it mm -hmm. because I kind of do taste a little coconut after it at the end. What about tofu? It. What about seitan? I'm not big into tofu. I've oh had my god, it's my favorite. But see, tofu can <laughs> it, it can make my stomach hurt sometimes. Uh -huh. Soy situation. Oh, so okay. you have to understand your intolerances exactly. and everything isn't for everybody. So but um I, I do know that it a lot of times it has to do with the way that the tofu is prepared because mm -hmm. it's it's prepared in so many different ways. So. Well, we'll pray to God to never give me intolerance to tofu because I could not be able to imagine my life with like eating something every day. What about the cheeses? I like, love vegan cheese. I eat too much that on vegan cheese. So, so you think it came far? You think? I think so. And I also think it's really easy to make your own like vegan cheese sauces and things like that. If you have the time and the will and the desire to like experiment, you can really make your own with, you know, cashews. If you have a nut allergy, you could do like coconut milk, it's, it's so, so versatile. This interwebs, it's magical what you can find out on this here interweb. Mm -hmm. So I just think that you should just have fun experimenting. Um, but I do really enjoy Good Planet vegan cheeses. Uh -huh. I'm going to shout them out. They're really good. Follow Your Heart is also a fan favorite of mine. Uh -huh. um, yeah, those are like really my two go-tos. Oh, and Whole Foods 365 brand. They have a smoked Gouda cheese that okay. I'm really not mad at that one at all. Really good. Uh, thank you for not being mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, vegan cheese has come the long way, mm -hmm. but I still think there is a, a long way to go more. It's, it's going to get there. I, and sure. oh, Well, that's what we were discussing. Yeah. The future, right? Yes. That's what I want. Like, I think if any, because I, I think there's some amazing Satan, amazing burgers, amazing meat alternatives. I feel like a cheese is the one that it's missing that absolute perfection that yeah. melts like a dairy cheese that we all remember from you know seven We're eight lab years. grown yeah. cheeses I grew yeah. Up on that. <laughs> yeah well um, technology anyway um thank you for uh, such an insightful answers and i would love to uh, now go to the next topic and talk about the climate change it's so trending right now. Everybody's talking about it. Last week I was in LA and I got invited to the event um, by the climate change activists and the audience that participate in the uh, climate change. It's a dinner style, so I arrived starving. And when I arrived there, there was no vegan food. I know. Blows my mind. Uh, to defend the host, he was vegan himself and he felt really bad about it. Uh, but the people who were at the table and who are advocating for the climate change and are just for the movement were eating pepperoni pizzas right in front of me. And I was kind of confused. So it was inspiration for me while I was thinking of the panel. I was like, this is a topic that we absolutely need to discuss. So, uh, Sheil, what role does the food play in a climate change? I certainly do not claim to be any sort of climate change expert or 
or anything like that. But I can speak from my perspective. And that is, I think this is more even a rhetorical question in the sense that certainly food uh, has a huge role with climate change and ways of um, sort of seeing how we can combat that is with you know the way that we eat uh, and, and really seeing where our food is coming from. Um, a lot of the room here, presuming uh, many people are a vegan or interested in veganism, are probably familiar with some of the basics about um, the resource utilization of the animal agriculture in terms of uh, amounts of vast amounts of water, um, other sort of resources that it takes to sustain the current system. And I think avoiding animal products can can definitely do a big thing in terms of avoiding the, that excess uh, resource consumption. Um, I think that it's really careful uh, for us as vegans that we try not to get on too much of a moral high platform in that I don't think that there's any perfect diet when it comes to um, climate change. I think that we as vegans should also still be uh, aware and conscious of where our food is coming from and where it's grown um, and kind of being in touch with the carbon footprint of a lot of the foods that we consume as well. Um, so whether that's eating more locally um, and maybe trying to avoid, if possible, uh, foods that are grown across the planet, um, I think that's all things that we can be aware of. But, you know, this all comes down to, yes, absolutely, food can play a huge role with, um, you know, climate and kind of, um, you know, climate change and what we can do against that. And I think that we as vegans, I, I don't think we should assume that just because we're avoiding animal products, that's, that's the only thing that we can do. I think there are other ways that we can be looking as well. Perfect. And I want to talk about those other ways. And Benji, you're a perfect person for that because you own restaurants. And I know also as a restaurant owner, we waste so much. And we are trying to minimize that waste as much as we can. Sometimes it just ends up costing us so much more trying to operate a business more sustainable. And I give a very simple example of just the, the packaging that we pack our food in. It's so much more expensive when we want it to be out of paper rather than out of plastic. The bags that we give to our customers, if they are paper, they are 10 times more expensive than if we just buy a thousands of a plastic bags. Um, so do you think more people would think of eco-friendly options if there was uh, a cost more cost efficient, right? Like we can do to minimize that waste in a restaurant industry. And do you think there's a room for profit if we all decide to think, oh my God, eco-friendly, let's think about a planet, can the businesses remain profitable? It's a really good topic, really good question. I think uh, long-term, especially in this day and age, brand is so important. So if you're willing to invest in your brand, sustainable packaging is an investment long-term because you're going to have uh, a more sticky client base because they're going to know that it is more expensive for you to do that. And you are going out of your way, especially in this day and age to find the right mm -hmm. products uh, that will lower the impact. Um, you know, there's a lot of innovation in this space right now. A lot of costs are dropping. Um, you know, bioplastics are coming in. There's a lot of new unique things coming to the market. So it's, it's going to get there. So anyone that takes the it makes the investment now into sustainable packaging and leverages that in their branding so that people know that they are doing that and you know you could even speak to the cost in regards to your brand so people know how much you're spending and you know most people are mindful enough to be willing to spend a little bit more knowing that their food is coming from a, a safe place with the proper nutrients and it's also uh, in a package that's not going to be uh, you know a net negative so uh, on top of that, though, just to speak to waste in general, you know, the average restaurant wastes 25,000 to 75,000 pounds of food a year. Mm -hmm. So not even to mention on the packaging, it's also on like the ability to manage your inventory, lower your overall waste of product. Uh, the I was running numbers just before this because I was like, how much does a person eat a year? And it's 2,000 pounds a year. So the average restaurant can feed 10 to 40 people a year. There's 750,000 restaurants in the U.S. We're looking at potentially almost eliminating hunger if food waste was transferred into action. And, and when I'm saying food waste, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It's when we know things are going bad, we can still put them in a position to, to sell them and serve them. So if we just gave that away, we would solve hunger in the U.S. Now, like that's a pretty bold statement, but if we just then found a way to get food waste covered, the packaging would be a no-brainer like the packaging is going to fix itself 
food waste is a bigger problem in my opinion because it involves a lot of operational uh, oversight whereas we can just purchase something for the same cost as plastic that's now bioplastic whereas food waste is another thing so that's where you know investing in the the systems for inventory management and lowering your overall cost of goods and all that stuff is where more of the focus should be at this stage because i feel like that packaging movement you know it's here you should make that investment and it's pretty simple to do it especially in north america so that should be a no-brainer in my opinion sustainable packaging 100 percent, and then focus right on food waste amazing i just love everything you said and uh, it made me think i'm like wow that's that's incredible it goes so much to the waste so thank you so much i would love us to go to the um next stop Two of my guests on the panel tonight are also content creators. Um, Tamika, besides your love for food, you are also implementing fashion um, in your content. Um, and I know that's a love of yours. Um, and it's always vegan. So I'm wondering how much does that influence your massive following to make just the better choices, not when just comes with the food, but also clothing? Yeah, so I haven't really, I like, I just recently started really putting the fashion part out there. Mm -hmm. I just was really, really focused on food. And then I kind of separated my boutique business with my plant-based Tamika. And now I'm like, no, I can absolutely do both. Mm -hmm. And it's the lifestyle portion of it. You know, it's, it's all about food, fashion, like just everything that you're doing, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. So um, those are my two top pillars. I love fashion and I love food. Um, but I think that like to truly call yourself a vegan, you have to have that intention behind everything and all your choices. Mm -hmm. So with that, of course, I'm not doing any like furs or anything like that, um, anything that's involving an animal. Um, and I've even been doing that since before, like going vegan. And it's so funny that there was that disconnect like with the food, but I didn't want to kill the animal for my fashion. So, mm -hmm. um, Finally, that, you know, actually got linked together. But I say if somebody wants to, like, be more mindful about their fashion choices, I'm a big, big thrifter. I love mm -hmm. secondhand shopping. So funny. I used to be so embarrassed by that, you know, growing up as a kid. But now I, like, I love going to thrift stores and secondhand stores. Um, I love shopping small businesses. Um, and then also there's so many sustainable brands. So it's like if I'm going to spend some money, you know, I'd rather spend it on a brand that is, uh, you know, actively trying to be a sustainable brand, maybe using recyclable, you know, recycled materials and things like that. But um, and shopping your closet like we don't need to wear something new every single time we're going somewhere and doing things. Um, I know that's more of something that's like a younger generation's mindset, but you absolutely just shopping your closet is really huge and just eliminating that part of the waste because there's so many clothes that end up in the landfills and things like that. So try to be mindful of all that. Perfect. Well, I love that. That's what I try to live by what you just said. And I just love it. And I hope that Tamika having thousands of people watching what she's doing, I hope this uh, inspires them and influences them to do um, a little bit more of that. But doctor, you are content creator. Too. Your videos are gorgeous, so beautiful. You often get millions of views on those. It also um, uh, get you a large following base as well. So what's the goal when you create that content? What goal do you have behind it and how you think it influences now of millions of people that have seen your videos? Sure. Well, thank you for your kind words on that. <laughs> um, so I think for me, it's less of a goal, but rather um, just a, a, an art form for me. So for, for me, food is, is many things. Food is medicine. Food is also art. And for me, food became an art form uh, as I was exploring medicine, but also more exploring art as well as a medium. Food quickly became a different medium that I worked with. Mm -hmm. And the posts that I do are really just a reflection of my creativity. Um, and what's kind of going on in my mind and just doing some creative work. Um, and that's kind of how, you know, really what it is. And, and it's not really any goal to say, you know, I want X number of likes or follows or whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's more so I just am a creator and I love to create and I love art. 
and just putting my work out there. And that's um, really my main mo motivation. It's really awesome to see that it's been received, received well. And I hope that it inspires other people to do the same, whether it's uh, exploring a plant-based diet through my work or just exploring their own interests and, and kind of knowing that you're not really stuck to one path. So for me as a physician, I'm not stuck to one sort of career, but rather being able to explore much more than that. Uh, and I hope that inspires other people to do the same. Perfect. Well, I it's it makes me hungry. That's a number one because like it looks so good, but also absolutely inspires. And your your book, it's beautiful, it's and you know, it's art. It's art exactly. <laughs> I have so to learn art. how to make some of um, some of those. But I'm gonna go to our topic number five since like you already mentioned it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Benji. Uh, food as a medicine. Um, you mentioned some health benefits that that you had. What do you think? I'm actually asking this all three of you, okay? What what did veganism did for your health? And what do you think it can do for others? So for, I'm a firm believer that food is medicine. Also, I didn't mention this before, but prior to getting into the restaurant game, I was applying to go to med school. I wrote the MCAT. I had a passion to help people. I always wanted to just help. I, that was my whole thing. I just liked help. I liked being around people. I liked helping people, but I also love restaurants. So my plan was to go into medical school and then later invest in hospitality. Uh, luckily enough, I didn't get into med school my first try. So thank you. And uh, got an <laughs> opportunity to start a restaurant with some friends. So, and here we are today. So that was, um, that's the starting point. Now I get to full circle it by using food to heal. I feel like I can help more people in the restaurant space by you know being a part of these types of communities and being a part of these movements um and being a part of you know being with great people you know we we, we spoke briefly i saw his cookbook after seeing him on the panel i was like dude we got to open up a restaurant <laughs> so you know there's there's things that could be done here but uh for me food healed me so i didn't know i was overweight i didn't know i was lethargic i didn't know i was sleeping all over the place just because of how i was eating so once i went vegan like I was saying, my I was like a whole new person. I I looked different within ten days. I felt different. Uh, I just there was so many compounding benefits, externally and internally. But the real, you know, you don't see your blood. You don't know what's really going on there. And once I got the blood work done, and it was like clearly an indicator that something happened in a very positive way. And it was simply by changing what I was eating, not any activity. That to me was the biggest light bulb, um, you know, seeing all the documentaries after seeing more videos that just provided more context to what was going on inside me. And, you know, the results kept improving. It was just, I for, personally, it's, it's like, I can't not believe that food isn't medicine. I, right. I experienced it. I've spoken to people who have used food to heal for various different aspects of their life. So I, uh, if if anyone ever has you know an issue in in my world, I I do put my doctor hat on. I go, what's your what are you eating? You know, let's start there. Even though I have no real real backing on that, I just I, it's hard not to focus on what you're putting into your body and where that food's coming from and is it nutrition based? Like, you know, you need to take supplements still on top of that in my belief because a lot of the foods that we're eating now have a lot less nutritional. Um, components to them than they would back in the day. So having supplements is also an important thing. Anyways, food is medicine. It worked for me. I feel like it works for all humans. It's just a matter of when. Wonderful. Um, Tamika, what's your story? Like, I know you... I don't shut up about my story, to be <laughs> honest. I feel like everybody probably already knows. But um, I, like I said, I initially got to this lifestyle trying to cure my asthma. All of a sudden, I was in my 20s and I had just developed asthma. I was getting sinus infections like clockwork every single year. Like starting November 1st, I would have a sinus infection. It, like no lie, I don't know why. <laughs> just breathing problems and I was thinking like, oh, maybe it's mold. Like maybe it's mold in my house, maybe it's dust. So, you know, I had everybody dust in the house. I had mold purifiers, all this other stuff. Um, long story short, I watched What the Health, I felt convicted. I was like, okay, like you said, I'm gonna give it a little bit of time, like you said too. I'm gonna give it 30 days. We're gonna we're gonna see what this is, cause I was a bona fide cheese addict. Like it had a hold <laughs> on me, chokehold. I could eat a whole block of cheese in one night, like seriously. Um, so, so after it didn't even take 30 days. Um, it took 
less than two weeks and my asthma completely went away, which was like, it dumbfounded me. And it just made me really realize like that, like you were saying as well, like food is medicine. And, and it's just like, we a lot of times don't understand that we're eating things that we're intolerant to. And I didn't realize, oh, my stomach is not supposed to hurt every single day. Like mm -hmm. that's not normal. Your body is telling you things. Your body is rejecting things and just because it tastes good or it's comforting to us like I always tell people just write things down write how you feel down after you eat certain things and then you may be able to pinpoint what it is um but I didn't just want to quit dairy I wanted to be better again like taking the whole veganism uh standpoint and do better for like I said animals um the environment and everything like that so for me it was an all or nothing thing so I just quit it all. So perfect. You just remind me of something really funny. I read somebody wrote, My toxic trait is um, the food that hurts my stomach normally. Let's see if it hurts it this time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we exactly. need to stop yeah, doing that. With that. Tofu. And I do that. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Let's see if it hurts today. me today. Yeah. So listen to your body. Okay. I couldn't think of a better person uh, finishing this topic yeah. than the doctor. Uh, please, doctor, tell us, what should we eat? What, what What's your opinion on this? So, I, I mean, to be clear, I certainly believe food is medicine. And I think my comment previously about fiber really encompasses that um, in the sense that incorporating all those things that are rich in fiber are are is probably going to be the easiest way to go. And, and and it's really as simple as that. And I tell people that we don't really need to complicate things too much. Um, really, if we go back to the fiber piece of it, then you're probably going to do pretty well just based off of that. Um, I've seen firsthand the positive impacts that can make. And what I love most about the work that I do, and my background in medicine is that I'm a primary care physician. So I do only outpatient work. I see patients in the clinic. I see people for preventative health visits. Um, that makes the majority of my day. And I love being able to empower people to say that food is an option and we don't have to go to med medicine. We certainly can and I do when we need to, um, but food is always a great option. And if people are willing to take me up on that, they end up feeling much better because of it. That's awesome. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for being um, my very first panelist. This is going to continue. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Go for applause for all three of them. Thank you. Um, thank you, Neiman, for moderating. Oh. You did such an awesome job. Uh, and we have something to celebrate, you American. Uh, thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Just yes. As of yesterday, as of yesterday, American citizen, thank you so much. <laughs> oh my god thank you so much everyone for coming here tonight i really enjoyed the night i hope you did as much as i thank you hungry kales for watching this on the streaming platforms and this is not uh, it is first but it is not the last the panel that we are going to demonstrate here from the plan x market and have a wonderful night everyone bye i love, 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 love.